Hello and welcome to Newsroom Series. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. Today we're in the Northeast region. But first, here are the top stories for the day. A community leader in one of the affected communities of in the recent attacks in Kogi State, Mr. Elias Atabo, who spoke to our correspondent in Lokoja, the Kogi State capital, says the death toll of the incident has risen from 19 to 25. Now, the figure, he said, included four children and 21 adults, with about nine persons presently hospitalized. Now, Thursday's attack, according to him, will be the second in less than three months this year alone. The first, he said, was on January the 29th, when four persons were said to have been killed by bandits. He said many of the villagers are still missing while calling on the government to come to their aid. Now, the community leader said that the communities, Agejuju Odo, Agejuju Odo, and Ajokpachi Odo, and of course Bagaji, had become ghost towns with no economic activity going on due to the attacks. Well, meanwhile, the Kogi State Governor Usman Odudu has expressed shock over the incident that claimed the lives of 25 persons with several houses set ablaze in Aguja Jodo in Omala local government area of the state. Now, according to a statement signed by the special advisor on media to the governor, the incident was as a result of communal clashes. Well, the governor, who regrets the ugly dimension that the communal clashes between people in the area have assumed over time, promised immediate intervention to forestall the recurrence of the unfortunate situation. Well, the governor commiserates with families of those affected, even as he promised support for those injured and others whose houses were destroyed in the attacks. He also assured the people that the perpetrators of the act would be brought to justice, adding that security agencies are already on the trail of the assailants whose act of mindless cowardice resulted in the destruction of lives and property in the area. But Governor Dudu further said that the state will deploy a detachment of the recently established Metropolitan Quick Response to the area to help complement existing security architecture in Omala local government. And now two stories from the region. The Adamawa State Governor Umaru Fintiri has tasked the reconstituted governing board of the Adamawa State University to transform the institution into one of the top 10 universities in the world. The governor who threw the challenge while inaugurating the board says this is in line with his government's pursuit of excellence in the education sector. According to the governor, some of the free education reforms and infrastructure development embarked upon in the state are already yielding results and will require a world-class university to absorb products of the various schools being established by his administration. It's the formal inauguration of the reconstituted governing board of the Adamawa State University, MUBI, headed by Professor Maxwell Guidado, who serves as the chairman, pro-chancellor, and four other members. Governor Umaru Fintiri is confident that the new board will deliver on its mandate to ensure provision of quality education, which he believes is a tool that can be used to reduce poverty levels, fight insecurity, and promote self-esteem. The decision to make education a top priority is a deliberate one. It is the most potent weapon to subdue all the vices and guarantee the future and safety of our society. Education is a tool of empowerment against poverty and the greatest arsenal against insecurity. It is the key that unlocks prosperity and the engine that powers self-esteem. We assure you, Your Excellency. The chairman of the board takes the lead in speaking on behalf of his members to give assurances on delivery of its mandate and rewrite the next chapter of development and excellence for the Adamawa State University. We are fully committed to upholding the integrity, vision and mission of ATSU and to working tirelessly to advance the university's academic excellence, research endeavors and community engagement towards making the university a first-class university in the nation. 
Meanwhile, the Commissioner for Education and Human Development, Garba Pella, emphasizes the importance the government places on education as a foundation for development. So the expectation is that with this uh, charge given to the Governing Council, uh, we are going to have a university in Adamawa State that is going to be, which, which is going to be a destination of first choice for even students outside the state, not to talk of our own students in Adamawa State. While Professor Maxwell Gidado leads the team, others appointed include Aliu Mohamed Gabdo, Vaidon Jaoli, Ali Damburam, and Hapsa Jimeta. In Gombe, the state government has paid compensation to persons whose homes have been affected by the Gali Erosion Control Project. In November last year, the state government had signed a 12 billion naira Gali Erosion Control Project spanning 21 kilometers of various communities within Gombe through a World Bank-assisted project. The project affected persons received resettlement package checks from Governor Inouye during an event that held at the Jaurobari community. Described as the Gali erosion capital of the Northeast, Gombe State has struggled with decades of ecological issues that have displaced communities and threatened lives. Committed to protecting lives and property in the area of environmental sustainability, the state government has initiated several programs, such as its 3G project, Gombe Goes Green, launched in 2019, aimed at combating desertification, deforestation, and soil erosion through annual tree planting campaigns. Several other projects have also been ongoing since 2019 in partnership with foreign development partners, all in line with its 10-year development plan. One of such projects is a 21-kilometer gully erosion control from FCE to railway quarters in Gombe local government area. It has been executed in collaboration with World Bank Acrisal Project. 343 people are threatened by the danger of flooding and have been asked to relocate to a safer environment as a project takes shape. But they are not leaving empty-handed. The crowd welcomes Governor Inouye Yahya as he arrives to present checks totaling 389.7 million naira to the affected persons. Our administration recognizes the impact this project has on the lives and livelihoods of our people. And it is our duty to ensure that those affected are adequately compensated in order to enable them to relocate with ease. In this regard, a total of 389,740,114 Naira is earmarked for the payment of compensation to the project affected persons. He also reiterates the commitment of his government to tackle ecological issues in the state. And we are committed to addressing other deadly erosion sites through partnerships with AFRISAP and other stakeholders. Today's event demonstrates our dual commitment to protect our environment and safeguard the livelihoods of those directly affected by the project. <laughs> Residents describe the gesture as timely. Yes, here today I am happy for the different presentation to your Excellency, Alaji Mohammed Yenu Ahaya. I am happy today. I am happy today. I am happy today. I am very much happy. Because what they give us is very special for us to prevent our houses. It is very good that we are protected with the entire people of Gombe State for the and impeccable work that is doing for Gombe State. As work on the Gali Corridor's erosion sites continue, Gombe State Government says it will continue to protect lives and property from adverse environmental hazards. To agriculture now in Taraba State, where the state government has commenced the enrollment of farmers into its database for effective distribution of inputs to boost food production and enhance security of lives and property. The data collation of farmers is expected to cover all farmers and crops in the 16 local government areas of the state, as well as the 168 wards. 
Agriculture is one of the largest employers of labor in Nigeria, which helps to boost internally generated revenue and enhances growth and development. In Taraba State, Northeast Nigeria, this sector alone employs over 65% of its population and government is taking proactive steps to address food shortage and soaring prices of food by collating the data of all farmers in the state. It's the turn of farmers from the 11 wards of Jalingo local government area who wait in line to be captured. The data will assist the government boost agricultural production through training and impulse distribution. When you came in here, you know waste time. They will capture you. They do all the necessary things so you without any stress. So in fact, I'm very impressed. This thing has never happened before. And we pray that government will do something that people will really appreciate the government of the day. This is a very good uh, intervention, let me say. Because as farmers, we have been suffering. Sometimes the mechanism to use in the farm is difficult. Like last year, I suffered a lot. The chemicals I bought, they, they failed, they failed because we applied at the wrong time when there was no rain. So I had to resort to manual working. So this intervention, if the government will really do it, I think it will help a lot. Registration will also determine government's policies, imputes and other interventions like access to loans in case of flooding or crisis. After the capture, they should be expecting uh, tailor-made uh, policies. They should be expecting uh, inputs from the government that would meet their specific needs in their various uh, local government areas. For Jalingo, we are rounding up tomorrow. They will move to other local governments from Monday. So moving from local government to local government until the system local government is being wrapped now, we are trying to do it between the time frame between now and towards the ending of May to be able to round up this exercise. The government insists there is no limitation to crops, size of farmlands or livestock. Farmers could assess so many of these uh, resources, but also like uh, credits. They can also assess trainings and other uh, resources from the uh, the government of uh, Abu Kefas. And that is what prompted him to go into this data uh, capturing for the farmers. If you go for capturing, they ask you all these crop types of crops you are uh, farming. They ask for maize, are you for maize? Any crop you are doing, plus any other one like livestock. If you are rearing livestock, you are also being asked. You give them the whole information. Even the heritage of your land you are cultivating. Whether it is a commercial farming or you are doing it in a group farming or anything, but they will consider, they are considering all this, they will ask all these questions. You ask them, that means you answer them the way it's supposed to be. Not that we are capturing specific farmers. Even the peasant farmers from the villages that are going to be covered all. However, some residents are urging the state government to properly do thorough background checks to ensure those being registered are genuine farmers. Welcome back. We're in Borono State now where the state police command has expressed dismay at the rising cases of fire outbreaks in IDP camps, markets and indeed other infrastructures. Now apart from the fire outbreaks, reported cases of murder of persons and kidnapping are also part of crimes taking prominence in the state as well. While parading other suspects, mostly the youth and minors, the police command exempts exempted the eight suspects arrested in connection with the murder of a university don. Uh, the Buenos State Police Command concluded with a call for residents to continue to support the police force with timely reports of incidents as it assures of diligent investigation and prosecution. It is saddening to know a case of corporal murder has happened on the 1st of April 2024 at about 0630 hours. The chief security officer of the University of Meduguri reported to Kwenge police station that on the same date at about 0530 hours, they discovered one Dr. Kamal Abdukadri, a lecturer of the Department of Physical and Health Education, University of Meduguri, laying dead in his pool of blood. On receipt of the report, police detective of Kwenge police station 
and forensic expert from State Criminal Investigation Department, Medibuli, visited the scene of crime and found the victim laying dead with multiple stabs of wood and injuries inflicted on his body. The victim's mobile phone and vehicle, one Honda Pilot, with badge number NGU 232 XG Yobe, golden in color, was carted away by the criminals. The body was taken to the University of Medjugorje Teaching Hospital for autopsy. Eight suspects have been arrested so far. Why the case is still under discreet investigation? So let's talk about the security situation in Borono State and joining us on the program is the Commissioner for Information and Internal Security in Borono State, Professor Usman Tar. Professor Tar joins us from our Abuja studios. You're welcome to the program newsroom series, Professor. Thank you. All right, so let's get into it. Borono State once was known as one of the states in the Northeast that bore the brunt of the Boko Haram insurgency and, of course, other criminal activities. But uh, calm has uh, returned, uh, relative calm has returned, and the uh, rebuilding process is now ongoing. Uh, can you give us an update on this situation at this moment in time, please? Thank you very much. Um, calm has returned back to Borno State. Uh, the state government has initiated uh, the Borno Restoration Project, wherein all ministries, departments, and agencies key into the 25-year development plan and 10-year strategic transformation initiative of His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Borno State, Professor Babagana Omar Azulum. The development program seeks to restore peace, security, and development. And the nexus between the three is very, very important. And all line ministries, departments, and agencies have their works cut out for them. That is the uh, first aspect. The second one is that uh, the security is actually a federal uh, exclusive power, uh, but state governments do contribute uh, to the security of the state. And the the governor is the chief security officer of the state, while the president is the chief security officer and commander in chief of the whole country. Uh, the Borno State government has supported all our security agencies in order to carry out their legitimate activities in the state. And this has contributed to restoring uh, public confidence uh, in the government and confidence in our security agencies. Uh, therefore, the the, the restoration of security is ongoing and uh, is ongoing uh, on, a, on a quick time. Um, the Borno State government has invested heavily in all the sectors, in agriculture, education, transportation, housing, name them. And in each of these sectors, there are budgetary allocations and, uh, you know, all the senatorial districts, all the 27 local governments are feeling the impact of His Excellency the Governor. Uh, if, uh, this year, the government identified over 50 projects, capital projects, that uh, we are going to implement over the next one year. And the work, have commenced, works have com work has commenced on all the capital projects, and uh, so far, so good. Um, another aspect is the return of IDPs to their ancestral homes. Uh, it came to the notice of the Borno State government that uh, the uh, conglomeration of IDPs in the state capital uh, was becoming counterproductive. Uh, people are amassed in the capital city of Maiduguri, and uh, this had taken a toll on the social amenities and the crime you know, continue to rise. So government took a decision to return all the IDPs back to their ancestral homes. And this has been going on uh, on piecemeal, on uh, incremental and on gradual basis. One village at a time, one local government at a time. And as I speak, over 90%, 90-95% of 
our IDPs uh, being resettled. Uh, and these are actually the official IDP camps. We also have the informal IDP camps where His Excellency last month visited some of these camps in my degree and uh, actually returned some, like the one in Dalori, uh, in Konduga local government. The governor uh, personally led a delegation to return the people back to their homes. It's not only, you know, returning home empty-handed. Uh, government resource agriculture opens vast lands uh, for farming, crop farming, and also um, builds, you know, use the security agencies to build trenches uh, with, with a parameter of over five kilometers, you know, on each cardinal point. And these are expendable, uh, extendable, sorry, uh, once the population needs more than five kilometers for farming purposes, it, it, is, it will be extended. But at the moment, the five kilometer parameter is for immediate farming. And uh, beyond the five, at the outer layer of the five kilometer perimeter uh, trenches are the, our youth volunteers, uh, civilian JTF, who are, you know, carrying out uh, sentry and surveillance duties on daily, hourly basis. Uh, and this is going on village by village, town by town. So um, that is the kinetic approach to the subject to, to, the, to the return of IDPs. The non-kinetic is heavy investment in infrastructure, in schools, in water systems, in uh, road transportation, and so on. So this basically uh, is the um, you know, summary of the restoration of uh, peace and security in Borno State. All right, uh, Honourable Commissioner, of course, you, you've, you've spoken extensively, um, particularly with regards to the IDPs. Uh, you've, you've talked about uh, having them resettled back to their ancestral homes, and you also talked about uh, you know, not just sending them back uh, without anything um, to look forward to or anything to uh, hope for in terms of their means of livelihood. But what efforts are being put in place uh, right about now by the state government to ensure the continued safety of lives and property, especially uh, for those uh, IDPs, you know, when they return to their ancestral homes. And for whatever it's worth, you know, there's calm now in Borno State, but the threat of insurgency still looms, wouldn't you agree? Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, the devil is in the detail. Um, what you see are actually sporadic attacks. It is fair to say that, uh, you know, a significant portion of the Boko Haram insurgency has been decimated. And uh, the Borno model is a platform for the reception and processing of repentant and repenting Boko Haram terrorists and those who are trapped uh, in the line of fire. Uh, that platform has created opportunity for most of the Boko Haram commanders and foot soldiers to return to my degree for, uh, and uh, to be, you know, institutionalized for de-radicalization and for uh, entrepreneurship uh, training and for, you know, return back to, you know, uh, normal life. And this project involves the participation of communities and traditional rulers uh, who participate in the processing, in the categorization, and more importantly, in the reception of low risk, those who are classified to be low risk, back to uh, communal life. And of course, those who are classified to be farmers and miners uh, and so on, those who are kidnapped and so on, they are adequately processed and they are quickly returned back to uh, their community. So the process of reception and uh, you know opening up platform for the soldiers to return back has created a situation in which the insurgency has been decimated quite significantly. And now, once the IDPs and other people are back in their villages, the, the responsibility for continued security of the people lies with the government. Uh, in right. this case, the Borno State government has been working very closely with uh, our federal agencies. To All right, we'll have to leave the it there. We'll have to leave it there. Of our people. Okay. Yes, my, my apologies. We'll definitely have to leave it there. But we thank you so much, Honorable Commissioner for Information and Internal Security of Borno State, Professor Usman Tar. We thank you for your thoughts on the program, Newsroom Series. Thank you. 
Well, as part of the response to diphtheria and cerebrospinal meningitis outbreak, the World Health Organization has handed over assorted medical consumables to the Yoba State Government. We're handing over those items at the Yoba State University Teaching Hospital on behalf of the emergency management an emergency manager for Northeast Health Emergencies Response, that's pharmacist Katuga Emmanuel. The surveillance officer says the items will not only provide care for the patients, but as well the patients and their relatives. And that's how we draw the curtain on the program newsroom series. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ayotunde Balogun.